Hi, my name is Amy Hahn Nelson. I am Director of Training and Technical Assistance for AISP, Actionable Intelligence for Social Policy at the University of Pennsylvania. We are an initiative that supports cross-sector data sharing of um, insights across the United States. Um, I'm here to talk to you today about a, a product that we, a project that we released this year called the Centering Racial Equity Throughout Data Integration Toolkit. Um, it came out in um, almost June 2020, and um, I encourage you to take this time to go ahead and click on this bit.ly and check it out. Um, it is a collaborative document. It was created by dozens of uh, contributors and authors, and we're very proud of it. So, why are we interested in this space and looking at the intersection of data integration and racial equity? Um, and, and really the answer is that the, the current amendment is quite complicated, right? So governments are using more data than ever before. Um, and this certainly isn't an improvement. Um, this is an improvement based on how we used to use data or how we would make decisions without data. But it, you know, it, it's still limited. Um, it, administrative data and analytic tools are, are deeply problematic, right? Um, they are not reflective of lived experience. They're not historically contextualized. They're not really great at distinguishing between correlation versus causation. And a lot of times we use proxies to really measure important concepts. So instead of measuring what we really need to measure, we're using something that serves as a proxy for that measure. Um, and all this is deeply problematic data use. So the question is, you know, what should we do about it? Um, and so here we lift up this idea that in the United States, just as um, we had ma major data infrastructure efforts of the, the 1800s, you know, the railroad system, 1900s was our highway system. And we, we think that, you know, this is the opportunity to ensure that our data infrastructure, our large infrastructure development of our current century is, is done with equity in mind. Um, we know that our railroads and that our highways both um, supported, developed, and decimated communities based on where they were placed and the, the intended and unintended consequences of, of how that data, uh, of how that infrastructure was developed. Um, so we, we, this is a charge for everyone to think about this infrastructure differently. So generally speaking, we strongly encourage inclusive participatory governance around data access and use. Uh, we encourage strong social license, a developmental approach to data sharing. So we highly encourage places and sites to start with data sharing that is you know, very aggregate or maybe geography based first and then um, develops into more data integration and looking at individual level identifiers following that. So a developmental approach, you must walk before you run kind of data sharing. Um, we generally discourage broad access to individual linked data. Um, while you know, some access is needed to do the integration, broad access um, comes with a lot of privacy risk. Um, we generally discourage any kind of data use for um, enforcement or investigative activities. Uh, use of predictive algorithms that don't have a strong um, you know, social license governance and just a lot of thoughtfulness around it. Um, and then the use of linked data across institutions that have just patterns of institutional racism and just significant racialized harm. So for example, in the United States, that would be um, law enforcement or um, any kind of um, justice data as it's, or policing data as it's often referred to. Um, through the toolkit, we talk a lot about this idea of risk versus benefit, where any kind of data access and use is inherently risky. And so you have to carefully balance this risk versus benefit. So thinking about um, activities that are very high risk and low, um, or high benefit, I'm sorry, and low risk, those you know, should go forth. But those data sharing and integration activities that are high risk and low benefit, we strongly encourage careful thought and deliberation around those. And in some cases, those activities should probably be stopped. We spend a lot of time in the toolkit framing out different concepts of data access and use. Here's one example of data um, in the United States that's very common is open data. We talk through different issues of open data um, in the context of racial equity. 
And um, we give clear examples of data that we think is currently open that probably shouldn't be and vice versa. But a lot of this is deeply local. Um, there's local context to this that really tells whether something should be permissible or not. That is, um, yeah, is local. It's hard to um, legislate that it's at a high level, especially a federal level. So the entire toolkit is based around um, the one example of a data life cycle. So the way the toolkit's organized is we have, there are six stages of this data life cycle. It starts with planning. Um, and so each one of these stages, we go through positive practices that are examples, problematic practices as examples. And then we lift up what we call work in action. So these are actual on the ground examples of what sites are doing. Um, with an emphasis on work that is ongoing. So everything here is a practice. Um, everyone is learning in this space. There's no one that really is identified as an exemplar that's doing this really well. Everyone is very much learning how to do this better every day. So this is a good example of the work in action. So we have a summarized version, which is what you see on the left here. And then we have a more uh, full length version with more description um, that is in the appendix. We also have several activities within the toolkit that we highly encourage people to check out. So if you leave this talk with nothing else, um, I hope you take the time to download the, uh, the toolkit. But really, the main thing I want you to take away is this. Where do we need to center racial equity in data access and use? And the answer is everywhere, right? There is something for everyone to do, no matter where you are. If you are a data steward, a data owner, a data custodian, um, a caseworker, um, Anywhere you are in the data life cycle, there is something for you to do today to center equity. So we know that this work is ongoing and we encourage you to reach out to us in some way. We already know that we will be working on a part two of this toolkit and we encourage you to interact with us, whether that's through social media, um, email, um, all kinds of options. So we encourage you to go to our website um, and check out the work going forward. Um, here are our two parallel documents that were released this year. We, um, we hope that you will take a, some time to look those over and any questions, uh, please reach out. Many thanks for your time.